If the cutting worker gives us material like this, can we refuse to weld it? By I, I'd say this piece is at least three to four centimeters too wide. Cutting mistakes like this are actually quite common. When we run into a job like this, we shouldn't refuse to weld. Because if you don't do it, someone else will. Doing it may not bring you extra benefit, but refusing to do it will definitely hurt you. Our choice is to use intermittent tack welding, pressing point by point to build it up. Now, some people might say, you're overcomplicating things, just shove in a steel bar and it's done. But in reality, this type of work not only carries water, but also warps. If you just jam in a rebar, the high welding temperature will cause phase transformation in the rebar. And if the cooling rate isn't uniform, brittle structures, like martensite, will form, which can lead to brittle fracture of the weld core. Secondly, the surface of rebar will definitely have rust and oxide scale, which lowers the weld strength. After finishing the root pass, we still need to make a cover pass, because both the height and thickness are insufficient. For this type of job, when running the electrode, pause slightly on both sides, move a bit faster across the middle. Because the weld bead is quite wide, don't travel too quickly. After welding, here's the final bead. We remove the slag. It looks okay, but still not good enough, because the bead is too wide. If the weld is too wide, the residual stress will be high. If the inspector sees it, that's a problem. So, while the inspector isn't around, we quietly grind down the weld and add a little cosmetic weld pass. For this seam, a bead width of about 1.5 centimeters is sufficient. Swing the electrode side to side and pay attention to your electrode angle. And there you have it, the final bead shape. We chip off the slag and now this job looks like a proper horseshoe weld. Subscribe Weldmaster India for more information about the